The Honourable David Parker. Speaker, we in this House are the guardian of civil liberties for the people that we represent. There's no one other than us that stands between inappropriate legislation and inappropriate legislation being passed and applying to the citizens of this country. Nowhere is it more important to look at the civil liberties of people than, it, than when it comes to legislation which gives powers to the state of intrusion into people's lives. When we do that, we are allowing the state more rights than we normally give to people to intrude in other people's lives, and we've got to be very careful that we guard those rights jealously. One of the most important protections that we have in any democracy is delay. Not undue delay, but appropriate time periods that allow the fourth estate, the media, interest groups who might be getting their heads around per, per, per the implications of policy changes. Oh, well, actually, Jackie Dean, I, actually, I say it like I mean it. I'd actually like you to take a call and say it like you understand it. Mr. 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 Speaker, that's the sort of inane interjection that we get from the National Party, not debating the substance of an important issue, but saying, saying like you mean. I say to Jackie Dean, I actually do mean this. I do mean this. I'm quite happy to be one of the people who stakes my reputation on appropriately protecting the civil liberties of our citizens from inappropriate state intrusion. I do mean that, Jackie. I don't have to shout it to mean it, but I am willing to take a call and state what I believe. Mr. Mr. Speaker, time is important. The time for processes ought not to be unduly truncated in any democracy. It's especially important when you live in a jurisdiction that has only one House of Parliament. It has no upper house to, uh, to, to negotiate once legislation is passed by this House. There is no effective constitutional check on intrusions into civil liberties in New Zealand except through this House of Parliament. I haven't seen Bill, Bill of Rights vet on this legislation. I don't know if anyone else has had an opportunity to read it yet. I don't even know if there is one. We haven't heard any discussion of it today. Only tabled today the bill. We haven't had the opportunity in this side of the House to get our head around the full implications of this bill. If we, with all of the resources that are open to us and our ability to devote full-time attention to this, haven't been able to, what hope is there that members of civil society have properly been able to consider the implications of this legislation? And that's why we allow ample time for submissions to be made so that people can think through the implications of legislation that impacts upon civil liberties, rather than rushing it through. Mr Speaker, Parliament views that so seriously that it recently introduced a change to um, standing orders so that we can have this very debate. Until a few years ago, we wouldn't be having this debate as to the appropriate truncation inappropriate truncation of select committee procedures. It was through a change to standing orders that was agreed across all sides of Parliament that we changed standing orders through introduction of this um, standing order 286, which is why we are debating this motion, which provides that where the truncation of the select committee process is uh, shortened for, by an inordinate degree, we should debate whether that is proper. And that is to enable us to highlight to the public how inappropriate it is that in a unicameral system with only one, one House of Representatives, no upper house, acting as a check on our conduct, it is appropriate that we properly protect our citizens from inappropriate intrusions by the state through proper scrutiny of proposals. Now, we're going to have this rush process. The Honourable Phil Goffs already said how difficult that is given the makeup of this select committee. This select committee 
uh, according to what the Honourable Phil Goff says, and I didn't know this actually, Phil, can never have substitutes. Can never have substitutes. Meant to have the Prime Minister sitting on it, hearing submissions, and the Leader of the Opposition uh, and representatives from other parties, all of whom are very senior, very busy, lots of other obligations. And the idea that they can do justice to this uh, within that time frame is wrong. But the idea that they will have the submissions before them is also wrong, given the truncated process. Mr Speaker, a lot of the organisations who are submitting on legislation like this are effectively volunteers in that process. They're not doing it because they're being paid to do it. They've been doing it because they, they think there is a public interest in submitting or that they've got some knowledge that Parliament could benefit from hearing from. They can't drop their ordinary lives. Sometimes they, they are accountable to committee structures that only meet once a month. How do they get this information out to their members, form a view, and then submit to the select committee within the time period that Parliament, because of what the National Party is doing today, is imposing upon them? They can't. This is another reason why the normal rule is that you have a longer period of consideration by the select committee, which then enables the select committee to give a fair notice through public notices to all and sundry through the, through the country. It enables people to get up campaigns through the media and the fourth, fourth estate and all of the little committees that might be interested in this in civil society, whether they're the Council for Civil Liberties members or whether they're rural women, what, whatever. There'll be lots of people that are interested in these issues, but they do not have time because of a truncated select committee process to be given sufficient time to submit to the select committee to give a considered view of what the implications of this legislation are. Now, in the Labour Party, we accept that the GCSB needs powers. We also accept that it is appropriate for the state to have powers of intrusion in respect of New Zealanders. We're not sure what the arguments are for and against the issue as to whether the GCSB should be given powers in respect of surveillance of New Zealand citizens that couldn't already be done through the likes of the police. Now, these arguments are very, very important. They need to be explored at select committee. Why is it that we can't just rely upon the police to use their warranted powers rather than giving the GCSB the powers to spy upon New Zealanders? There are no doubt arguments on both sides of that debate. We want to hear them. We want to hear them properly. The fact that this has been a live issue for the Prime Minister since the middle of last year is already a matter of public record. We know that the GCSB warned the Prime Minister that there were doubts about the legality of some of the GCSB conduct arising out of the dot-com fiasco, which it has to be called, in the middle of last year. So since the middle of last year, the Prime Minister has known that there is an issue or there may be an issue at large. Here we are just about a year later and what does the government do? Having mucked around for all of that time, having obfuscated, having, you know, been, you know, having all these faded memories as to what was said where and then, we now are told that we've got no time for a normal select committee process to consider whether the uh, civil liberties of New Zealanders are inappropriately infringed by this legislation and the government now says, having delayed all that time, the best part of a year, they've now got to truncate the only part of the process that the public can be involved in. How cynical is that? How inappropriate is that? How unprincipled is that? You look how long we took for the search and surveillance legislation. A good process was run around, around that. It actually took over a year. It's important to get these things right. There are civil liberties at stake. There are high principles that go back forever. You know, you don't have to think about too far back to think when we've had governments in New Zealand that have gone a wee bit towards the totalitarian fringes that happened in New Zealand under Mr Muldoon. It did. The courts pushed back against that. You've got to think of this legislation long into the future when you may have a government that is not as benign as the governments we have now or have recently had. These principles are important. These principles are meant to be protected by standing orders, Mr Speaker. This motion should not be agreed to. Very, Mr Speaker. Uh, Gareth Hughes. I rise to say.